Okay, the next item in our list is the pattern matching. Pattern matching is not new. It existed for decades as one of the most powerful functional programming technique. But it hasn't been seen before in the mainstream languages. Scala takes the credit to bring the pattern matching to the center of the programming style. So the next question is this. What is pattern matching? When we talk about pattern matching, the first thing that comes to our mind is a string matching or a regular expression. But in the context of a functional programming, this terminology takes a new meaning. Instead of a regular expression matching, the functional programming is going to look into matching objects against other objects. What does it mean? The most fundamental example of object comparison is a type checking. You got an object and you want to test it for following possibilities. Does it match with a string object, integer object, double object or something else? Here is the code for such a comparison. Okay. This example is the most basic kind of pattern matching. We call it a typed pattern match. We use this kind of pattern matching as a convenient replacement for type tests and type casts. If you want to do the same thing in Java, you would be using a bunch of instance of test. And when the test succeeds, you need to do a cast. But Scala pattern matching gives you a convenient alternative which looks like Java's switch statement. But instead of matching numbers, that's what a switch does, right? So instead of matching numbers, you are matching object types. The Scala's pattern matching also binds the value on a pattern match. In this example, when the object x matches with an integer type, Scala binds it to i. If it matches with a string type, Scala ties it to s. This automatic binding saves you from casting the x to a matching type. The type test is a common problem. Let's say you are dealing with a JSON or an XML object. JSON or XML is a tree of various data objects. And those individual objects may be a customer name, a phone number or an address. You don't know the type of each element and hence you have a problem. The only way to deal with them is to have a bunch of instance of tests. In every case, you are asking a question. Is this a phone number? Is this a customer name? If the answer is yes, you need to cast it to a phone number object. This approach is rather ugly and clumsy. Pattern matching does the same thing in a much safer and more natural way. The typed pattern match is just one. There are many other kind of pattern matching. I'm not going to cover all of them here. But before we close this part, it is important to understand the purpose of pattern matching. So why do we need pattern matching? Let me explain. If we take an object oriented approach, we encapsulate everything into an object. The data structure as well as the methods to work on those data structures. Both are encapsulated to create an object. And then we don't look at the data structures within the object. We just use methods, right? When we need new functionality or a feature, we add new methods to the object definition, correct? This approach works perfectly fine if you have a fixed set of operations that you want to perform on the data structure. Even if you occasionally want to add new methods to the object, this approach is perfectly fine. The problem comes when you want to perform new operations on those data structures all the time. You might realize that you already have tens of methods defined, but now you need a new one. You keep discovering new requirements and you may want few more methods and then some more a few days later. Sometimes you don't own the code and it is not possible to add new members for some reason. What will you do in those situations? The pattern matching gives you an alternative to handle this problem. The idea is simple but incredible. 
deconstruct the object i mean when you create an object you pass parameters to the object and construct it right i am talking about reverse procedure take the data structure out from the object if required deconstruct those structures as well then it becomes easy to perform the necessary operations on those data structures in a layman's language if you can open a box and take individual items out you can do a lot many things with those items right let me give you an example assume you have a class to define a message the code for the class looks like this we have two data elements the id of a person sending the message and the message text itself both of these items are string type since id is a string it can be an email address a mobile number a skype id or maybe something else in fact anything that we can represent as a valid string may be a sender's id now assume you have got a list of messages it may be something like this some of them are email messages while others are sms from a mobile phone now we have a question to answer do we have two successive emails from the same person on this list when i say the same person i mean lisa@yahoo.com is the same as lisa@gmail.com we ignore the domain names can you create a function to answer this question how will you do it think about it let me give you a step by step logic take two messages from the list right extract the sender's id from both the messages check if both of them are email addresses if yes ignore the domain part and extract only the username check if both usernames are same if yes return the answer you got a positive answer right if no remove the head of the list and repeat with the tail of the list right if you reach the end of the list return a negative answer you didn't find it right do you agree with the steps they are straight forward you can easily write a function using java or any other language but that would be a little ugly and clumsy pattern matching can give you a code that is concise clean and easy to follow if you carefully investigate the logic there is nothing other than deconstruction type test and action let me explain this the first step is to take two messages from the list in fact it is deconstructing your list into three parts the first message the second message and the remaining messages step 2 is again deconstruction of message into id and message text step 3 is a type test if we have a class for the email address then we want to check if the given string is of an email address type right step 4 is once again deconstructing an email address to a username and domain name step 5 is an if condition step 6 is an action step 7 this is again deconstructing your list into a head and a tail the point that i'm trying to make is this you can sense a pattern matching solution when your logic is all about following things deconstructing objects type checking testing if conditions and taking actions that's what we have here in this example my function looks like this doesn't it look simple concise and straightforward it's hard to explain the code without going into lots of scala language details we need few more lines of code to make this work so i am skipping the detailed explanation for now we will revisit this example and pick up few more examples when we talk about pattern matching and extractors in scala language however The complete code is available on my GitHub for your reference. The link is available in description. Let me execute the code and show you results. You can load the Scala script file using below command. 
द स्क्रिप्ट क्रिएट सम ऑब्जेक्ट्स फंक्शन अ मैसेज लिस्ट एंड एक्सक्यूट द फंक्शन एज वेल हियर इज द आउटपुट ग्रेट दैट्स ऑल अबाउट पैटर्न मैचिंग फॉर नाउ थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर वॉचिंग लर्निंग जर्नल कीप लर्निंग एंड कीप ग्रोइंग